Hello friends, it's Dr. Lebrun here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at El Prendimiento de Antonito el Camborio. All right, so first off in the title, it translates as the arrest of Anthony the Camborio. And even in the title, there's a little bit of description that we can look at. It's not Antonio, like Anthony, but Antonito. So this is the diminutive form, uh, meaning little Anthony, or maybe even innocent little Anthony, or beloved Anthony, or dear Anthony. So the arrest of this innocent Anthony, the Camborio. Right, vamos a mirar información sobre el autor Federico García Lorca. Él fue la primera víctima de la guerra civil española. Él fue poeta y dramaturgo. Y él vivía en Andalucía, España. Él nació en 1898 y murió en 1936. So Federico García Lorca, one of my favorite authors. Um, this is a very important work here uh, because uh, it impacted uh, history and the Spanish Civil War, which broke out in 1936. And Federico Garcia Lorca, for what he wrote in this poem, and maybe his other beliefs and ideologies, was the first victim uh, murdered, assassinated, um, executed, and his body has never been found to this day. Um, so he was a poet, a playwright. He lived in Andalusia. So if you know anything about southern Spain, there's influence with the gypsies and the flamenco music. Uh, it's very hot there. And all that stuff comes into play in his, in his works. And so the Spanish Civil War erupted, exploded in 1936, and that was Federico García Lorca was the first person, uh, the enemy that the that the government of Spain went and killed. And I believe that this play, what he, or this poem, what he wrote in it had a part to do with that. So let's take a look at the reason why. Um, stay tu tuned to the end to find out. All right, vamos a hablar sobre el movimiento La Vanguardia. Los años de La Vanguardia son 1920, a 1960. Uh, tiene lenguaje más simple, un mensaje político y social, y los subgéneros son la, ge la generación de 27, su realismo y poesía de la negritud. All right, so this is in the mid uh, 1900s. Uh, the language is a little bit more simple as compared to maybe some things like Baroque or some of the other time periods. Um, notice it's got a political message in this one. Um, sometimes there's a, a social mes message as well. And this one we're going to look at a little bit more in depth, this generation of 1927. Um, also, Surrealismo, you might notice some works from Pablo, uh, Pablo Picasso. No, uh, yeah, Pablo Picasso. Um, also, Pablo Neruda and um, Salvador Dali. And um, also we're going to be taking a look eventually on this Poesia de la Negritud. There's some authors like Nicolas Guillén, uh, Nancy Morajon from Cuba that explain this experience of being Afro-Cuban. But um, we'll save that for a different video. In this video we're going to focus on the generation of 27. All right, so La Generación de 27 o 1927. Los autores tienen ideologías liberales e izquierdistas, um, tiene temas de la anti-religiosidad, and aquí vemos el mundo de los sueños, la rebeldía, la libertad imaginativa. Um, so if you've studied anything with the psychology of Sigmund Freud, um, he really gets into the, the dreams and the subconscious, and that this is building off of that. And so some of these anti-religious um, leftist themes, liberal themes, are what got Federico Garcia Lorca killed. And we'll take a look at some of the words that he wrote that incited some violence um, that came back came back to him. All right, unos recursos literarios. Aquí tenemos el sinecdoque. Cinco tricornios representan cinco guardias civiles. Um, el tono, el actitud o estado emocional es serio. And aquí tenemos símbolos de poemas son la luna verde y los cuchillos que representan la violencia. Um, some literary devices that you might find in this poem, we've got sinecdoque. So these five three-cornered hats um, represent the, these five three-cornered hats represent the five civil guards or five soldiers of the Spanish government. The tone of this poem is serious and there's some symbols like the green moon and the knives that represent violence. 
Okay, un poco de la información cultural. Los gitanos son un grupo en España que recibe discriminación y injusticia por el gobierno y la sociedad. Uh, Lorca quería ayudar a los gitanos por sus escrituras. So a little bit of background information on the culture of Andalusia in Spain. Um, we've got the gypsies. Uh, it's a group that receives discrimination and injustice from the government, from society, and that was even more so in the past and even continues into the present day. And you especially see a lot of gypsies in Andalusia in the southern part of Spain and really through all throughout Europe where they uh, receive discrimination. All right, so Lorca, uh, he wanted to help the gypsies, and we'll take a look at how he did that, how he tried to do that through his writings in this poem, El Prendimiento de Antonito el Camborio. All right, so un breve resumen del poema. Antonito está caminando a ver el corrido de toros en Sevilla. Uh, los guardias civiles prenden a Antonito sin razón, y Lorca implora a los gitanos que luchen contra la injusticia. So just a quick summary of the poem if you're not so familiar with it or you didn't understand it um, as much. Um, Anthony, he's just on his way to Seville in southern Spain. Uh, he's just going to a bullfight, which is a part of Spanish culture, and he's arrested by the soldiers without any reason, and that's why uh, I believe that Lorca uses the word Antonito for his name instead of Antonio. Um, to, to imply that he's just he's just an innocent guy. And in doing so, Lorca suggests that the gy gypsies should rise up against this injustice and rise up with violence, which again comes back to Lorca in real life. All right, vamos a mirar un ejemplo. Antonio, ¿quién eres tú? Si te llamarás Comborio, hubieras hecho una fuente de sangre con cinco chorros. Ni tú eres hijo de nadie, ni legítimo Camborio. All right, so let's take a look at the words that Lorca wrote in this poem. Anthony, who are you if you call yourself Camborio? Uh, you should have made a fountain of blood uh, five of uh, five streams, uh, referring back to the civil guard. You're not a child of anyone. You're not a legitimate Camborio. And so Lorca is saying that Antonio should have used a knife, again representing violence, a symbol for violence, and made five fountains of blood from these five soldiers. All right, el resultado. Lorca fue la primera víctima de la guerra civil española. Las palabras tienen impacto en el mundo real. So, because of what Lorca wrote in this poem and his other ideas, he was the very first vict victim of the Spanish Civil War. And so you can see that the words that we write, they actually do have an impact in real life. It's not just something that we're reading from history a long time ago that they actually impacted. And um, even today, the things that we write um, really do affect us in real life. All right. Gracias por mirar. Adios. Hasta pronto. Chao. Buena suerte en tu examen grande. Nos vemos en el próximo.